What's up guys, Pokebacks and Plays here, and today we're here for some Nationals videos. So I'm actually going to start making videos of Nationals probably all week, showing off the top decks, and I have all the cards for it now, I just want to show off a bunch of cool decks that are really good for Worlds, and that are really cool in general. And this is actually one of my favorite decks in the format right now, it's really fun, and even though I only started playing it recently, I really, really enjoy it, and fortunately it actually got third at the US National Championships. So. I'll show off the deck to you guys right now. So our rolls are on Seismo DX with the attack Quaking Punch. It has two um, colors, energy for 30, and your opponent can't play any item cards. Now usually this is the only attack that people um, use Seismo for. However, uh, it actually has Grenade Hammer, which is 130, and it does 30 to each of um, your bench Pokemon. Now usually this attack is very underused use and not used at all. But with some of the tricks and little things in this deck, you can actually abuse it and uses a very strong attack which is and the 30 damage to your bench Pokemon doesn't really matter because of um, the rough seas which can heal 30 damage as a stadium and also uh, it actually combos into some things such as Glaceon's first attack second bite uh, which does 20 plus 10 more damage for each damage counters oh never mind uh, but does 20 plus 10 damage for each po damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon never mind my bad um but you have another card you have in here is Manaphy. If it, you're, you have any water energy on you, uh, your opponent you have no Richie cost. This is super strong because this makes it this is basically Darkrai. So anytime your Pokemon has a water energy, you can just retreat it. This makes it so that heavy Richie costs don't really matter. That makes um, Flow Stone not needed. You play one Regice just to um, resistance Blizzard. It's very strong, um, just preventing it attacks from your opponent's e up. Pokemon EX is really good. And it's kind of hard to get around. Um, and it's also not an ability. Glaceon, really good because of second bite, which <laughs> confused the attack of. And Crystal Ray, which does 70, and during your opponent's next turn, they can't do it. Uh, you prevent all damage done by evolutions like Vesp Queen and Raichu and things like that. You play 1 Articuno. This card is actually freaking amazing because of the attack Tri Edge. It does 20 plus. 40 damage for every flip you get, and you can have flip for three times. Now you guys must be like, why is it so good? Well, is it actually? It has the like pseudo ability kind of ancient trait thing, which uh, Delta Plus. If your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out from damage of the attack of this Pokemon, you take one more prize. So if you get one heads against a Joltik, or use um, let's say, a Fighting Fury Belt, you're taking two prizes for a 30 HP Pokemon. And usually, if with a Fighting Fairy Boat, you can do, and one heads, you can do 70 damage and up to like 100 damage. Maybe if you get lucky, like 150 damage. But usually, I try to bank on only one heads um, because that, that way it stays reliable. Uh, you play two Shaman just to set up very quickly and like get cards into your hand. And one of the best decks I think is in this deck is Hoopa EX. Yeah, it's so strong. It's the ability Scoundrel Ring. When you play it from your hand, you can look up, you look for your deck. For up to three Pokemon EX Pokemon and put them on your in your hand. So you usually turn one Ultra Ball for a Hoopa, and then get a Seismitoad, a Manaphy, as well as a Shaman, which will set me up for the rest of the game. And this is very strong because it just helps advance your board state and really put you ahead in the game. Um, so that's that's it for the Pokemon. Now next we have. The trainers, these are all really important, really cool and unique and kind of how they work. You play four max elixir, you look at the first top six cards of your deck, and attach a base, basic energy you find to your Pokemon on your bench. So this is good because you power up some Pokemon on your bench and accelerate energy. And then what you can do is you can use energy switch to move an energy from one place to another. And so this makes it super interesting because you can have one attacker and then the next turn you can play double energy switch for example and then have another attacker that's fresh and so this kind of has a, a thing where you attack and you go to the bench you start healing you do a lot of healing and then you come back and attack again and that makes this deck really really strong you play three trainers to get all these cool items four ultra ball very standard four vs seeker also very standard and then you play a kind of interesting line of supporters one is to get rid of like a lot of huge damage pokemon or a shaman one hex just to um, negate abilities for one turn. This is also really strong. Two Lysander, I believe. Yeah, two Lysander. Um, this actually won Paul Johnson in top eight against the best Queen Plume. 
Lysander really helps get the Pokemon you want to you want to hit because you can't actually one hit KO anything with this deck, or very rarely you can. Uh, you could play Aurora CX, but uh, Paul Johnson decided not to. So Lysander just make sure to pick off the things on the bench. To win, because uh, tech does go behind sometimes, so get your opponent at a low hand size, and then you can just accelerate off that. For Professor Sycamore, going through your deck very quickly and helps you get the energy switch and max likes as you need. For Rusty's, we already went over this a little bit, but this card is amazing. It makes it so that like grenade hammer's damage to the bench doesn't really matter. You can heal off very quickly and very easily. It's actually a very good card overall. Three fighting fairy will. 40 HP is huge and makes your Pokemon super bugly, bulky. And 10 more damage is always nice, right? And then to finish off the deck, you play um, f 11 uh, water energy. Just, just, I don't need to show you the stats of water energy, but you play 11 water energy just to um, power up your Pokemon. Make sure you have enough for everything. And you also play um, one megaphone, just get rid of tools that you don't like. And. One super hard to get back your Pokemon like Shaman and Glaceon, Articuno, anything you might need, and also energy, of course. So I'll be back with the game in just a second after this shortcut, and we're back. So we're playing against AJR 620, and so he's calling a coin flip right now. And so we're just gonna see how his trial game is the deck works. So I won the coin flip. This is very fortunate. I'll go first. But with most decks, it's very good to go first. And well, obviously, yeah. So we're gonna go first. This is gonna help us get it set up very quickly. And it looks like we're playing as a Mega Gyarados Gold Duck deck. This is interesting. This might be a tough matchup because they have so much health and they can also heal with Rough Seas. So playing Rough Seas is kind of a questionable decision in this matchup. And they're gonna we're gonna Mulligan twice, but it looks like so are they. It's kind of hard when you're playing as big Mega Pokemon with this deck because you can't pull out, put it out that much damage or do that much pressure. So, we're going to click done. And we're going to start off with two mana fees. This is fine because of course we have, I'll just attach an energy now for your retreat, which is very nice. And so I'll just, hopefully I can get off my Ultra Ball, I can get something good. Like a, hopefully off my Trainer's Ball I can get an Ultra Ball, which would be very fortunate. And I do, it's very nice. Um, this is just going to help me accelerate my deck a lot. So I'm going to Ultra Ball discarding Manaphy and Zerosic. Hopefully Hoopa's in the deck, and Hoopa is in the deck. It's very good for us. So we're going to grab a Hoopa. Scoundrel Ring for 3 EXs. Off of that I'm going to get Shaman. Uh, Toad. And actually, he's playing an evolution deck, so Glaceon will be good in this matchup. Because I don't want to let evolutions attack me, so that's kind of the counter we have against evolutions. And once they have a lot of damage on them, we can Oko them with Glaceon, right? So I'll put that down. And also, if we can uh, prevent him from getting a Spirit Link down, that'd be great. So we're going to hope for an energy, and we do get an energy. That's very fortunate for us. You try to put as many energy as you can in the deck so that you can have um, a consistent Max Elixir engine. And so luckily we got the energy, and most of the time you will. Okay, so I'm going to put... Attach this here. Retreat. And we have fair retreat because of Manaphy's ability. Aqua Tube. And maybe we can get an energy switch here. But, oh, we're getting an end. That's good. We'll play that. So he can't actually do very much damage or Oko me turn one. The most he can do is like Stormy Seas or something like that. And I do get um a energy switch, but I'll hold it for now in case I want to do something else next turn. This will maintain give me options like next turn I could energy switch a uh, retreat besides the toad energy switch onto Glaceon and attack. So I'll, energy switch is a very powerful card because of the, all the options it allows you to do. Right now I can have like a, I have a lot of attacks I can do. I can hit a, even hit a rain hammer next turn if I like to. Uh, if I can get a Zerosic this turn, that'd be really good. Cause that way you can't mega evolve without losing a turn. However, I don't think losing a turn is a big deal either. So 
It's kind of a, a, a throw up. Oh, he's getting his stormy seas. Okay. So how many energies does he get onto his Gyarados? And we kind of miss it. So he's going to get two energy. Wow. Okay, that's really great. So we're not going to want to let him be able to Mega Evolve next turn. Because that'd be kind of gross. So we're going to see if we can get Zerosic this turn. Um, a Ultra Ball discarding a Water Energy. And I don't want to get rid of these two because these are very valuable. So I guess I'll get rid of a Professor Sycamore. And the Shaman is in there. I checked my if Weather was in there, and it is. So I'm going to Shaman for four, hopefully, to get a VS Seeker or something like that. Be able to get a Zerosic. And we do get a VS Seeker. That's very fortunate for us. As we're going to VS Seeker, grab a Zerosic just to slow my opponent down. And this way, he can't Mega Evolve without losing a turn. And with he has all his energy down, it's definitely a threat. So I'm going to hold the Max Elixir. I'm not really sure what I want to do with it right now. So I'll just leave it alone. And so now I'm kind of playing into a lot of options. Because I have Max Elixir, I have Energy Switch. I can probably get an Energy in my hand when I want. And I'll flick a Sycamore or something easy like that. And I have a VS Sycamore for next turn to do whatever I want. And he can't play items because of my um, Quaking Punch. So he can't use Splash Burn if he'd like, but I can actually knock him out next turn, and then that'd be really detrimental if I use like an Energy Switch. I'm just gonna pass the turn and do that. All right, that's um fine for us because what we can do now is attach here. Yeah, so we don't want that to happen. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start trying to use Crystal Ray and. As you guys can see, I'm not dropping rough seas. I realize that, like, I don't. I have. Um, he has a bit of damage on him, and I kind of want to preserve that damage right now. And if I. If I use something like a rough seas, he can start healing, and I don't want that. So if he has his own rough seas, like, I mean, like, good for him. But I'm going to hold mine for now, and I'm not even going to play a supporter because I don't think. I, I don't really need any resources right now. When I do, I will, but. For now, I'm just going to have to use Crystal Ray. And now, unless he has a Lysander, which is possible, he can actually attack me. And if he does have a Lysander, I can use Second Bite next turn. And regardless, actually, I can act, I can probably use Second Bite next turn and knock him out. Because it says 20 plus 10 for each damage counter on my opponent. So I don't have to keep stalling with uh, Crystal Ray. I can just straight up use my Second Bite, which is very powerful. So as you can see, the Zek already has a ton of options. I had a max elixir in my hand, energy switch, and I quickly powered up my Glaceon and put a fighting fairy belt in like a matter of like one or two turns. And I still have a fully powered up toad with two energy and a fighting fairy belt for whenever I want. I can put another energy and swing for 140. And so, as you can see, he's trying to power up his Palkia. Palkia isn't very strong, but he's trying to do something with him, anyways. I mean, he could use Aqua Turbo, and some if he somehow powers up Pearl Hurricane. He's gonna lie to me. That's fine. That doesn't matter. He's gonna do. If he knocks me out, that's really unfortunate. Does he knock me out? Yeah, he does. No, he doesn't because of my Fighting Fairy Belt. Right. So that's really, really good for me. So now, um, sure, I do have 200 damage on me, but however, he's a small hand size, and now I can second bite for the knockout. And so that's kind of the power of this deck. You, he has 120 damage on him, so I can do the uh, 250 damage to him. And also, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna play down rough seas and start the healing train, because I want, I don't want this, all this damage on me. And so, this is really good for me because of my fighting fairy belt being super bulky, he couldn't knock me out, and now I'm in a great position. And he, there's not that much he can do against me right now. Um, maybe I can get an AZ sometime soon and actually get rid of this side through with all this damage because I don't really like it. Uh, I can probably get the energy back anyways, so I'll be fine in that regard. Okay. So, 
I think I'm start gonna start quaking punching again. He can't do like that much damage to me, so if I just quaking punch, then he won't be able to apply a ton of pressure, and I'll still have my Glaceon in the back for a second bite whenever I need it. And oh, you see, he's powering up another Gyarados. Okay, that's fine. I have. I might. I play as the Rose. Make sure he can't Mega Evolve without losing a turn. And the power, the ability to quick and punch whenever you want, and like having things like the Rose to control the pace of the game. These are all very, very strong. And so yeah, I'm gonna start quaking punching like this turn while I'm healing. And so even though I put down rough seas, which is kind of detrimental to me in a way, I'm still in a pretty strong position. And oh actually what I might be able to do I don't know, do I wanna I could AZ this Sasm to get a fresh one onto the field. But I think I'm gonna use that as kind of a trump card. I don't really need it right now. If I get a max elixir off this, no, I have a Lysander though. That's good for me. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I need it. I'm just gonna leave it alone, and it'll, it should be fine. Just because I don't really feel like I need to AZ right now. I think there's a, there's a place where it could be really strong, and that place isn't necessarily right now. So I'm just gonna Lysander up this Gyarados and start quicking punching it. Although it's only doing 10 damage, um, the effect of Quaking Punch is very strong. And now he can't use items, I'm kind of blocking him out of the game. And if I play this well, even if he Mega Evolves, I have Glaceon. So if I play this right, there's not much he can do. And eventually I'll be able to use um, my Grenade Hammer for 140. Yeah, 140. And I'm actually going to start damaging myself with Grenade Hammer. No, I'm not. No, so I forgot what Manaphy's attack was again. No, that's stupid. But I can rough seize every turn, and that way my opponent can't very do very much. Okay, so he's gonna storm me seize. Gonna get three energy onto the field. That's um kind of unfortunate, but this is I think any scoops. Yeah, he realizes that there's not very many options. Although I think I could have been an interesting game. I could have AZ'd and then started. Uh, powering up maybe in Reg Ice, which would have been really strong and couldn't have done anything to that either. And I kind of just took over the game, made it so that, yeah, he maybe had a few options, but my options were just way better, and there wasn't that much he could do. And so that's kind of the power of this deck. You just, you play with your different tools and your different things to kind of overpower your opponent and make it so that they can't really do anything like well and nothing efficient, nothing no any good options that are really strong. And so you just kinda of win the game like that. And that's what I wanted to show with this deck. You you just overpower your opponent with all these different things and even against a meta as you guys saw, Glaceon does a ton of damage if they have like even like a little bit of damage on them. It can do a ton of damage up with your two hit KOs. And with my rough season, I was healing. I was I healed a ton of damage. Like it was like 80 damage off my Pokemon. And with another rough season, he wouldn't have been able to kill me anyways. And even though he was powering up his things, uh, I had a lot of options, a lot of ways to counter it. And so my options were just better than his at every point in that game. And after a powerful setup, he couldn't do very much. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked that video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye.